See, when you begin to study the structure of the body, we know that the body exists for one purpose only, and that is to reveal that which is within it. So, I'm going to tell y'all about this dream that I had when I moved to Oklahoma back in 2016. Me and my wife, girlfriend at the time, got an apartment. And I remember one night I had this dream. So, you all know how dreams work, right? Like, it starts off one way, then you jump to something else. So, in this dream, I realized that I was inside of a prison or a concentration camp or FEMA camp, whatever. And then it jumped from that to me and some other people around me discovering that we had these powers or abilities, right? So my powers and abilities were me being able to run really, really fast, like Flash or Sonic the Hedgehog or Superman or whatever, right? And also, I had the power and ability to jump over these really, 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 really tall walls. And another power or ability that I discovered was that I was able to uh, move things with my mind. You feel me? So it's crazy because when all of us discovered that we had these powers, we got together, we put together a plan to escape. So boom, it jumped from that to us escaping. So everybody's escaping. You got some people fighting. You got some people just trying to get away. You got, you know, myself, you know, I'm running and I'm jumping over these uh, fences. And I remember me jumping over the fence and the, the facility or concentration camp prison, whatever it was, it was it was like close to the woods. So when I jumped over the fence, I'm running in the woods, right? So, boom, military just come out of nowhere, right? And me and some other people, we running, we running, we running. And I remember I turned around and I just looked like this, right? So, I, I looked to my left and I saw a tree. Broke the tree off, you feel what I'm saying? And threw the tree with my mind. Threw the tree in the direction that the military was coming in, right? And from that point, you know, I started running and it's so crazy because I woke up right after that. I was sweating. I was breathing real hard. And um, after I woke up and everything, got myself situated, I remember telling my wife, I'm just like, babe, like I just had the craziest dream. So after I told my wife, she was like, damn, man, that's crazy. But that's something to think about, though. And, you know, at the time, you know, I just left it alone because I'm just like, man, it's, it's just a dream. You feel what I'm saying? But how about two years after that? OK, now, actually, I think it was it was a year after that. I can't really remember. As a matter of fact, let's let's look it up. A movie came out. So the movie is called The Darkest Minds. Some of you all may have seen that movie already. But for those of you who haven't. You should check it out. It's a little corny movie, but, you know, uh, I just found it interesting because I'm just like, dang, I had this dream. Um, when did this movie come out? It came out 2018. So I had the dream two years before that. But anyway, I just found it interesting that I had this dream and then they come out with this movie. OK. So just to give a uh, synopsis of the movie, you know, what's going on in it and stuff like that, because I find this kind of interesting. So here I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says a contagious disease called idio or idiopathic uh, adolescent acute neurodegeneration kills nearly 90 percent of the children throughout uh, the United States, leaving the survivors with unusual abilities. As a result, the government places the survivors in rehabilitation camps or FEMA camps where they attempt to control them and their powers. 
The children are identified by color groups based on their abilities. Green represented super intelligence. Blue represented telekinesis. And that is one of the abilities that I had. I was able to move things with my mind. That's telekinesis. Now, yellow, electrokinesis, being able to shock things, you know what I'm saying? Just control electricity and things like that. Now, red represented pyrokinesis, meaning, you know what I'm saying, you can set things on fire and all that type of stuff. It's basically a psychic ability um, as well. And last but not least, orange, psionic ability, okay? So reds, oranges, and yellow are considered so dangerous to others that they are ordered exterminated or killed. So yeah, after I watched the movie, I said and I thought about it, and I'm just like, that's just strange. You know what I'm saying? Like, why did I have this dream? What was the most I trying to show me? You feel me? I, I didn't I didn't quite get it at that time. But 2019, this year, another movie came out. Now, this movie is what inspired me to do this video. Okay? Now, the name of this movie is Glass. Some of you all may have seen it. Some of you all may have not seen it. But if you haven't seen it, listen, watch it. Now, what I did was I took some clips from this movie because I want you to hear um, what was said. And you're going to find it interesting the same way I found it interesting. Okay. Uh, you had two movies to come out prior to this movie. You had Unbreakable, and then you had Split, right? So, uh, let's see here. In the film, David Dunn becomes locked in a mental hospital alongside his arch enemy, Mr. Glass, as well as the multi-personality, The Horde, and must contend with a psychiatrist who is out to prove the trio do not actually possess superhuman abilities. Dunn is forced to deal with not only the psychiatrist's intentions, but also with Glass and the Horde teaming up against him to prove to the world that superhumans exist while killing anyone who stands in their way. So basically you got Bruce Willis who plays this guy that has superhuman strength. Right. And then you got the other guy, James McCoy. He's playing the horde, the guy in the movie who has multiple personalities. You feel me? And then like, I guess his his last form or whatever is like the beast. And, you know, with him becoming the beast, he's able to scale walls. And he also has uh, superhuman strength as well. Right. And then you have Mr. Glass, who is a mastermind. OK, he's the one that's putting all of this together, you know, that brought those two together to fight each other kind of creating the good versus evil uh story or whatever right so all three are in this mental hospital or crazy house so check this out staple who is the lady that was hired by the illuminati or secret society okay to go around to each uh individual who believes that uh not only believes but know that they have superhuman abilities it's her job to go around and convince them that they don't have these abilities so check this staple explains that her job is to convince those who believe they are superhuman that in fact they are simply suffering delusions of grandeur okay she tells david elijah and kevin that she has been given three days to convince them of this Otherwise, they will be sent to trial. Elijah's mother, Joseph and Casey, a girl who survived the horror's imprisonment, all visit at different occasions, but fail to convince Staple that the three men's uh, superhuman abilities exist. As part of her final evaluation, Staple brings the three men to a room together where she tests David and Kevin's psyche. I understand that the three of you think you are superhuman, that you don't think you are normal. You've convinced yourselves you have extraordinary gifts, like something out of a comic book. 
I am here to discuss the possibility that you are mistaken. All right. So after she successfully convinced them, uh, there's another scene where Mr. Glass sneaks out of his room and he went to the whore's room. Right. And he told the whore, listen, um, you do have these powers. You do have these abilities. You understand? And the whore was like, no, but, you know, I, I just I just don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. I'm a comic book expert, Patricia. I believe comic books are a continuation of documentation that has gone on for centuries of what humans are capable of. That they are what someone somewhere saw or felt. I believe the beast may be part of this. There are references to man slash animal. So when I went to go watch this movie, I just found all of what was being said interesting because when you read the Bible, when you read all the records like the book of Jasher and all that, we're going to go into all that too. But you read about how our forefathers were like stupid strong. They were able to do like superhuman things. You feel what I'm saying? And not even with the Bible, but just throughout history. I mean, you read all these different accounts of people, our people, doing these like superhuman things. Listen, these people know who we are. And I'm not talking just Hebrew Israelite. I'm talking beyond that. They know who we are. They know what's in us. They know what we're capable of. They got it wrong in the comics. They talk about secret evil groups trying to stop the heroes. I don't think we are particularly evil. And we don't choose sides. We try to stop both of you. If there is one of you, the opposite of you appears. It escalates. We step in. There just can't be gods amongst us. There just can't be gods amongst us. It's not fair. It has worked just fine for 10,000 years our way. All three were real. Quite special, actually. If you approve, I will move to the next city. Will there be any repercussions? No one saw them. I know what my charge is. Convince them. This is the most humane and effective method. We're not executioners, and we don't need martyrs. If that fails, use the machine. And I understand how important what we're doing is maintaining balance, keeping order. Maintaining balance, keeping order. unknown forces that don't want us to realize what we are truly capable of. They don't want us to know the things we suspect are extraordinary about ourselves are real. I believe that if everyone sees what just a few people become when they wholly embrace their gifts, others will awaken. Belief in oneself is contagious. We give each other permission to be superheroes. We will never awaken otherwise. Whoever these people are who don't want us to know the truth. Today they lose. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. We are delegates for God. Alright? So the first scripture I want to start off in is John chapter 10, verse 30 through 38. So it says I and my father are one. That's very key. Very important. I want you to remember that. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Yasha answered them. Many good works have I showed you from my father. Which you're going to find out. The father is within you. You feel what I'm saying? So all of these works were coming from the father who was dwelling inside of his temple. Hold on. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we stone you not. We don't care about your words, but for blasphemy. And because that you being a man, make of yourself God. So peep this. Yasha answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. Now we're going to pause and we're going to go to this scripture, which is in Psalms chapter 82. 
a matter of fact, let me read the whole chapter since it's so short. OK, a rebuke of unjust judgments. The most high standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? See, la defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6, I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. The average person doesn't have the authority to maintain another person's rights. This is a legal and judicial function, which is the job of judges and kings. And you can find this all throughout the Old Testament, starting in Exodus 18. Matter of fact, let's get it. So Exodus chapter 18, verse 25, and Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. So if there were people in Israel who were appointed to be judges and kings and things of that nature. What was the issue? Why is the most high rebuking these judges or gods? Well, what you have to understand is that these kings and these judges of the earth who abuse their authority and power for their own sinful passions, for oppressing the poor and for every evil action. Peep this. Psalms chapter 58, verse 1 and 2. Do you indeed decree what is right, you gods? Do you judge the children of man uprightly? No. In your hearts you devise wrongs. Your hands deal out violence on earth. This is the Aquarian Gospel, chapter 19, verse 24. It says, Our doctors, lawyers, priests, and scribes oppress the poor while they themselves in luxury live. So this is chapter 10 in Aquarian Gospel. It says, Elihu taught, he said, in ancient times, a people in the East were worshipers of the Most High, the one whom they called Brahm. Their laws were just, they lived in peace, they saw the light within, they walked in wisdom's ways. But, but, priests with carnal aims arose, who changed the laws to suit the carnal mind, Jeremiah 8 and 8. Bound heavy burdens on the poor and scorned the rules of right. And so the bronze became corrupt. So now that we understand what this chapter is talking about, let's go back down to verse six and seven, though. It says, I have said you are gods, right? We know that the children of Israel were the chosen, the Lord's portion, a peculiar people. We different. So it says here, and all of you are children of the most high. Hmm. That's interesting. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse one and two. This is talking about the children of Israel. You are the children of the Lord, your God. You should not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art a holy people unto the most high, your power and the most high have chosen you to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth i want y'all to think about this if we were made in the image of the creator and we are sons and daughters of the creator what does that make us you're not just some insignificant being here on this planet you are much more than what you think you are I know a lot of y'all, y'all just cool with just, yeah, we, we Hebrews, we Israelites, but you're more than that. <laughs> you more than that, man. I'm going to show you in this video that we have powers. We have abilities 
beyond our understanding. All right, so we back in John chapter 10. I'm going to finish this off before we uh, move forward. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say you of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world, you blasphemous, because I said, I am the son of God. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Now we're going to move on to the next section. I posted something on my Facebook a while back and I think I said something like, um, if someone wanted to find God or search for God, where would they go or where would you direct them? And in that post, I think I listed um, three things. I was like in the Bible, in a physical building made with hands, like your church or monastery or whatever, or within you, the temple that was formed and fashioned by the creator. You understand? So. According to my research and my studies, I'm confident in saying that I would direct that person to look within themselves, search within themselves, seek within themselves, and they'll find the most high. I know a lot of Christians believe that you have to go to a physical building in order to, um, you know, get the word of God or or just interact with God or whatever. Right. And then they'll try to make you feel bad if you don't go to church. Well, only if they read the Bible, they will find that they are the church and they are the temple. But let's not put the cart before the horse. OK, Acts chapter seven, verse 46 through 49 says, who found favor before the most high and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Okay, let me read that one more time. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Most High? Or what is the place of my rest? Acts chapter 17 verse 24 the most high that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things so one may pose the question if he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, where is he dwelling? Is he in the sky? Is he over here? Is he over there? Where he at? I'm going to show you where he dwells at. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, know you not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells within you. If any man defile the temple, his body the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. And then we're going to skip down to verse 17 through 20. But you see what it say. Glorify God in your body. Oh, and don't worry. We're going to look up what that word glorify means. Okay. For those of you who don't know. Verse 13 in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says meats or foods for the belly and the belly for meat. OK. But the most high shall destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for fornication. And I understand here it's saying fornication, but there's a lot of things that the body is not for. So it says the body is not for fornication. But for the most high and the most high for the body. And I really want y'all to pay attention to what's being said. OK, this body, this this vehicle, this suit, 
wasn't given to us to go out here and fornicate with, commit adultery with, to get wasted with alcohol, with all these different drugs. That's not what the body is for. So what you should be thinking about is what is the body for? If you ever had that question, what is my purpose? What is the purpose for me inhabiting this body? See, when you begin to study the structure of the body, we know that the body exists for one purpose only, and that is to reveal that which is within it, which you're going to find out in verses 17 through 20, what that is that we should be revealing to the world. Verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Most High is one spirit. What did we read in John chapter 10? With Yasha. Remember verse 30. I and my father are one. But he. Okay. He referring to anybody. That is joined unto the most high. Is one spirit. So flee fornication. Leave it alone. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication. Or anything else. Sin up against his own body. What? Know you not that your body is the temple or house of the Holy Spirit? Which is in you, which is in you, which is in you, which you have of the Most High. And you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify. God, the most high in your body. Let me read that one more time. It says glorify God in your body, not outside your body, in your body. Now, if you want to worship outside of yourself, that, that's fine. That's cool. That's cool. But here, okay, here it's saying worship or glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are powers. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to look up two words. We're going to look up temple. And I have here temple 3485. Naos. OK. It says a temple, a shrine, that part of the temple where God himself resides. And we just saw according to what? First Corinthians three and first Corinthians six, that God dwells within us. This temple, it says here, a sanctuary, divine dwelling place, a temple, sacred abode, the place of divine manifestation. So, like I said, the body exists to provide an appropriate instrument for the measurements and for the manifestation of the human soul. So according to all of my research and studies, the body has to be more than just the mass of matter. It has to be more than a mere machine. It has to become the means for the expression of that which is within it. Pete, what I'm saying. Now, let's look at the etymology of the word glorify, because I know when I said worship, a lot of you all was like, what? But check this glorify means to praise we always say praise the most high praise the most high well praise the most high within you honor the most high within you extol the most high within you exalt the most high or the power within you i know some of you all may be asking well what about those people who sinning you feel me you saying god in them too you saying the holy spirit is in them too Check this out. Wisdom of Solomon chapter one, verse four, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide. When unrighteousness cometh in. This is the Aquarian Gospel, chapter 18, 
verse uh i want to read the whole thing but for sake of time i'm not gonna read the whole thing um i'm gonna just start at verse nine this is when yashua was like 10 years old and he attended the passover right so uh it says rabbi i would like to talk with you i am disturbed about this service of the passover feast i thought the temple was the house of the most high where love and kindness dwell. Do you not hear the bleeding of those lambs, the pleading of those doves that men are killing over there? Do you not smell that awful stench that comes from burning flesh? Can man be kind and just and still be filled with cruelty? A God that takes delight in sacrifice, in blood and burning flesh is not my father God. I want to find a God of love and you, my master, you are wise. And surely you can tell me where to find the God of love. But Halil could not give an answer to the child. His heart was stirred with sympathy. He called the child to him. He laid his hand upon his head and wept. He said, there is a God of love and you shall come with me. And hand in hand, we will go forth and find the God of love. Verse 16. And Yasha said, why need we go? I thought that God was everywhere. Can we not, this is the important part, can we not purify our hearts and drive out cruelty and every wicked thought and make within a temple where the God of love can dwell? So I know y'all seen the title of the video where it says, you know, um, we are delegates or delegates for God. I'm in the Aquarian Gospel, chapter 91. This is where everything is about to get real real interesting okay so verse 35 and yasha said all men are sons of god and if they live a holy life they always are at home with god okay remember when he said i and my father are one and remembering on um, first corinthians chapter uh six when it says all those who are living righteous are joined uh with the most high i might be saying that wrong but yeah you get what i'm saying um so it says uh they see and understand the works of god and in his sacred name they can perform these works okay the lightnings and the storms are messengers of the most high as well as the sunshine rain and dew the virtue of the heavens are in god's hands and every loyal son may use these virtues and these powers. Why? Man is the delegate of God to do his will on earth. Now, for those of you who believe that this record is heresy, that it's made up, it's just false. You mean to tell me that that is not true? Have any of you ever seen the Most High with your two physical eyes? No, you didn't. You haven't. But the closest you came to seeing the Most High is through other people. When you see people go out and help the poor, what are they doing? The will of the Most High. When you see people saving other people from destroying themselves, killing themselves, what are those people doing? The will of the Most High. He's using them to be a savior in that particular situation. You see what I'm saying? So, like I said, none of us have seen the Most High with our own eyes, but we see the Most High through the actions of people. OK, same way we see Satan through the actions of people. Let me continue, though. It says, and man can heal the sick. Same way Yasha healed the sick. Same way Dr. Sebi healed a lot of people. Same way Dr. Africa healed a lot of people, which is the will of God. You know what I'm saying? Then it goes on to say man can control the spirit of the air. Mm. So on this side, you got people who deal with witchcraft and magic and things of that nature, right? 
where where they where they conjure up spirits, evil spirits, or demonic spirits, or whatever, right? And you got pe then you got people on this side who say they don't deal with witchcraft and all of that, but at the same time they're conjuring up spirits as well, whether they be good spirits. Still, it's a spirit. You know what I'm saying? Or if you want to say angels, you got bad angels, you got good angels. But nonetheless, it's 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 like these people and these people are doing the same thing. It's just one controls the bad, one controls the good. You feel what I'm saying? So no matter if you're on the good side or the bad side, we can control the spirits of the air. And I'm going to go deeper into that in a little bit. But let me continue. It says, and raised the dead. Now, we know that Yasha raised the dead. We know that Elijah raised the dead. Okay? Check this. Because I have the power to do these things. It's nothing strange. All men, not some men, not just me, but all men may gain the power to do these things. But they must conquer all passions of the lower self. Now, if you haven't watched my video on who is Satan, then look, I suggest you to go watch that video. You may not agree with everything that I said in that video, but I brought forth some good information. OK, check it out. So it says they must conquer all passions of the lower self or the flesh. And they can conquer if they will. Verse 41. So man is God on earth. And he who honors God must honor man for God and man are one as father and the child are one. Behold, I say the hour has come. The dead will hear the voice of man and live a scriptures in my mind. Um, Ezekiel dry bones, right? When I read this, it just makes me think of the dry bones. All those who are spiritually dead. But it says the dead will hear the voice of man and live because the son of man is son of God. You men of Israel here, you live in death. You are locked up within the tomb. There is no deeper death than ignorance and unbelief. Let me read that one more time because a lot of y'all be downplaying knowledge. Be saying like, oh, it ain't, you know, knowledge ain't everything. Knowledge ain't everything. When in the scriptures, it tells you multiple times that our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not only that, but our people have gone into captivity for lack of knowledge. Uh, not only that, it says knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of your times. You feel what I'm saying? So here is just saying there is no deeper death than ignorance and unbelief. But all will someday hear the voice of the Most High made plain by the voice of man and live. And that goes back to what I was saying. We see the Most High in people. Not only that, when people speak good things, when they speak life and positive things, that's the Most High speaking through those people. You understand? Like I showed you, we are the temple of the Most High. OK, the whole purpose is to reveal that which is within us. So it says uh, you all will know that you are sons of God and by the sacred word may do the works of God. Verse 46, when you have come to life, that is, have come to realize that you are sons of God, you who have lived the life of right will open up your eyes on fields of life. All right. This is chapter 92. It says, and while the guests sat at the board, behold, a cry, the village is a fire and all rushed out into the streets. And lo, the homes of many neighbors were in flames and in an upper room, an infant lay asleep and none could pass the flames to save the mother. Wild with grief was calling on the men to save her child. Then with a voice that made the spirits of the fire pale and tremble yasha said peace peace be still and then he walked through smoke and flame climbed up the falling stair and in a moment came again and in his arms he brought the child and not a trace of fire was on himself his raiment or the child 
Then Yahshua raised his hand, rebuked the spirits of the fire, commanding them to cease their awful work and be at rest. And then as though the waters of the sea were all at once poured on the flames, the fire ceased to burn. And when the fury of the fire was spent, the multitudes were wild to see the man who could control the fire. And Yasha said, this is the important part. Man was not made for fire, but fire was made for man. When man comes to himself and comprehends the fact that he is son of God and knows that in himself, in his temple, in his body, what lies all the powers of God. He is a mastermind like Mr. Glass in the movie Glass and all the elements. OK, all the elements will hear his voice and gladly do his will. OK, so what is this saying? The wind, fire, the sea. All of those are spirits, angels and the angels were created to serve who? Us, the elements, the forces of nature are subservient to us. The powers that be, they know this. I'm telling y'all, this is why they hear this information. This, this, this is why they demonized everything. So we wouldn't find out. Because if we did, it'll be over with for them. Now, for those of you who may think like, oh, man, I ain't dealing with that record. I'm on a stand in the scriptures. You feel what I'm saying? You can keep all that which you just brought out. Well, let's go into the scriptures. So starting with Moses, who was a waterbender, Exodus 14, 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Most High caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. All that night and made the sea dry and the waters were divided. All right. So this is the book of Jasher, chapter 81, verses 34 through 39. The Most High was working through Moses to perform these miracles or whatever. Verse 34. After this, Moses rose up from amidst the people and he prayed to the Most High and said, O Most High power of the whole earth, save now your people. Whom you did is bring forth from Egypt and let not the Egyptians boast that power and might are theirs. So the most I said to Moses, why do as you cry unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they shall proceed. And do you stretch out your rod upon the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall pass through it. And Moses did so. And he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it. And the waters of the sea were divided into twelve parts, and the children of Israel passed through on foot with shoes as a man would pass through a prepared road. Now check this out, verse 39. And the Most High manifested, okay, manifested to the children of Israel his wonders in Egypt and in the sea by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Okay, so did the Most High himself? do these things no he did these through the vessel or the temple of moses and aaron okay that's how the most high work that's how the angels work they work through people now let me go down to chapter 82 verse 31 and read this okay so it says and the people rejoiced greatly at all the good which the most high had spoken to them through Moses and they said we will do all that the most I has spoken to you okay so again here is showing how the most high was speaking through Moses no matter how you look at it Moses was able to control the elements all right and if you want to say yeah but the most high did it okay he used Moses to do it, though, didn't he? All right. Moving on to Joshua, chapter 10, verse 12 through 13. It says, then spake Joshua to the Most High in the day when the Most High delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, 
stand you still upon Gibeon, and you, moon, in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. All right. So this is second Kings chapter one, verse 10. It says, and Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. And there came down fire from heaven. And consumed him and his 50. I could read 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 17 through, what is this, 24. It's basically just telling us how Elijah was able to bring um, this woman's son back to life. But I'm not going to read it. So here we are in Mark, the fourth chapter. Uh, I'm going to read verses 35 down to 41. This is where Yasha comes the storm. Verse 35 says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. And said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So this man spoke to the wind, spoke to the sea. Told him, listen, be still, be at peace, calm down. And they obeyed him. And for those of you who may feel like, well, that's Jesus, that's Yahshua, that's Christ. We can't do what he did. Cut it out. Let's read John chapter 14, verse 12. Where Yahshua said out his own mouth, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Okay? And greater works than these shall he do. So the same way Yahshua came into the flesh, just like us, showing us that we have the power within us to do these things. But in order for us to do the same works that he did, and do even greater works than he did. We have to become him. And in order to become like him. What did we read in um, the Aquarian Gospel? Chapter 91. We must overcome death. We must overcome our lower self. We must overcome those lower passions and desires. You feel what I'm saying? Overcome the flesh and operate 100% in the spirit. You understand? In our higher selves. Now, I'm going to continue to show you how our bodies are the temples of the Most High and that the Most High works through us. He uses us to uh, carry out his will in this earth. OK, so this is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 19. It says the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You. Children of Israel are my battle axe and weapons of war for with you will I break in pieces the nations and with you will I destroy kingdoms and with you will I break in pieces the horse and his rider and with you will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. So on and on and on with you with you with you will I do this will I do that. OK let's keep going. Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 14 and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of who my people you understand what I'm saying by the hand of my people 
will I lay vengeance upon Edom, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Most High. Listen, you are more than what you think you are. I know for a fact that we have powers and that we're, you know, we're able to control the different elements and things of that nature. We just don't know the science behind it. We just don't know how to do it. But I guarantee you, as long as I got breath in my body and as long as the most I keep putting that spirit on me to do this research and try to like figure this stuff out. Listen, I'm going to help y'all. So with that being said, I'm just going to say peace, love and light. And I really appreciate y'all for checking out the whole video. This video right here is actually going to be an introduction to a series of videos where I'll be breaking down the human body and breaking down the science behind the human body. Not only the human body, but nature and the universe as well. But I'm gonna need y'all help though. If any of y'all have information that you're willing to share, send me the information, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'll look into it, I'll put it with my information and then we can just go from there, you feel me? If you wanna reach out to me and chop it up with me, about some information that you may have or whatever, then hey, do that. Let's build, let's grow, let's wake up that power within us and connect with it. You understand? But let's bring peace and harmony back to this world. So with that, I'm gonna just say peace, love, and light. And I love y'all. Shalom. There just can't be gods amongst us.